Hello everyone, this is Justin. This is part 5 on my series of affording type 1 diabetes, where you learn everything you need to know about how to afford type 1, how to afford insulin strips, and everything in between without insurance, without breaking the bank, cheaply, affordably, and easily. This is the last of the series, and I'm just using it to make a quick note on getting syringes and pens, because this is especially important if you end up using Walmart insulin, because both R and NPH come in a vial. They don't come in a quick pen. You have to actually get syringes you can put in the vial, take insulin out, injecting yourself, rather than just having it all in a pen. Now, fortunately, getting syringes is actually very easy, and I'm going to go over that. But first, before I do, let me make a quick note. This is for the United States. Um, this is where I'm at. You might be able to get syringes just as easily in other countries. You have to look that up for yourself. And um, we're also going to talk about pens here a little bit, but they're not quite as easy to get or nearly as cheap as syringes can be. First thing we're going to talk about, of course, is where to get syringes. We know what syringes are. Where do we get them? Just like with R and MPH, you can get them from Walmart. And they're actually really cheap. I was able to get a full box of 100 syringes for about 12 bucks. They're actually very, very cheap. And how easy it will be to get those syringes really depends on the state. In most states, you can get them without a prescription, just like with R and NPH. But because they're needles, um, it's a little bit harder in other states. You might need a prescription. And in others, you might be limited on how many you can get with that one. Now, I know in some states, it's actually the case where you can only get maybe a pack of 10 without a prescription. So you might need to get a prescription for them. But nonetheless, getting syringes is cheap and easy especially for most people. They might question you though, it's not as easy as getting our insulin because they're needles and there are drug abusers out there that also use needles. So they might question you a little bit, they might give you a little weird, weird look. So be prepared to know what you want, know exactly what syringes you need and uh, maybe bring some proof with you. If you um, have your meter, bring that with you. If you just, just make it clear that you're a diabetic. Right, you don't want to give them any weird ideas, and if you end up buying syringes at the same time as you buy your R insulin, they're less likely to suspect anything because they're going to go, "Oh, yeah, well, he's using it for insulin." Clearly, syringes aren't the same as pens, right? They're meant to be disposable, one use only, and um, while it might be more cost effective to reuse them, you really shouldn't. I don't recommend you do it. If you do decide to reuse them, be very careful because the thing about syringes is that um, there's a sort of a silicone lining in the syringe. When you inject insulin in the syringe, you put in your body, no big deal. But when, after you're done using that syringe, there's still a little bit of insulin left in the syringe and in the needle. That insulin goes old and it interacts with the silicone in the syringe. If you end up reusing that syringe, if you inject that the insulin from the old syringe back into the vial is going to ruin your insulin and it's going to make the whole vial cloudy and degrade it. You don't want to do that. So be very careful if you reuse your insulin. I really recommend that if you do it, you know, just don't push anything back into the vial, but that's going to be hard because, you know, air bubbles and stuff like that. Just try best not to reuse them. If you do, be very careful not to push old insulin back in the vial. Okay, and you also want to get the right size. So if you're doing the low carb approach that I recommended in my video about using our insulin and in my other video series, then you can just get the smallest one. The smallest one is 3 slash 10 cc. It holds up to about 30 units and has half unit increments on it. Perfect for precisely getting those numbers right. And really, that's best for most people because most people don't really need to inject more than 30 units in one sitting. If you need more than that, you can go up, but really I think the best option is the 3 slash 10 cc syringe. And I prefer getting the 6 millimeter um, needle length. That's usually long enough to get through your fat and into get the insulin in without any issues. If you go too long, then you might end up hitting muscle and that insulin is going to impact you much faster, which might be a good thing 
in some instances, like if you need to use R for corrections, but for the most part, you want to avoid, you want to try to eject into fat. Now you might want to do that on purpose, and that is what is known as an intramuscular injection. Again, you can use that to get the insulin running through your system much faster if you're doing a correction or if you need, you just need the insulin to work right now. You can get bigger needles for that, but I wouldn't recommend it for a day-to-day, -day, your basal, your bolus needs, especially your basal. And if you're on the go, let's say you're working a lot or something like that, and you don't want to carry a vial with you, you can always pre-fill these syringes and then carry them on the go. That's what I do a lot of times. Now, how about pens? Because pens admittedly are, in a lot of ways, very convenient, much more convenient than carrying around a bunch of syringes and a lot less sketchy to use in a restaurant or in a public place to boot. Now, unfortunately, there's no pen versions of R or NPH at Walmart. There are pen versions of Humulin, and you, know, you can get them, but they're not going to be nearly as cheap as what you can get at Walmart. Um, but you can always find refillable pens, or maybe you have some refillable pens right now, and then just, you know, clean out the pen fills and fill it up with R and pH, you know, using a alcohol swab or what have you. Look up tutorials and using that. Um, you can you can do that too, and that works just fine. But if you don't have refillable pens, in the U.S., it's a little hard to find them if you don't have a prescription for a good price. I was able to get a couple refillable pens, um, Lily pens, called Lily Luxury HD. And these are great because they actually have half unit increments. But it did cost me a pretty penny, honestly. And I couldn't find anything for, you know, Novolog brand pen fills. So just be careful with that because these pens only work with their brand's pen fills. Lily brand pen fills work with Lily pens. Novolog brand pen fills work with Novolog pens. They don't really work together, unfortunately. It's not uh, really a cross compatibility, so keep that in mind. And if you do decide to use pens, please, please, please label them. Because, especially if you end up using two similar looking pens, you don't want to accidentally take your MPH or your for your R, or your R for your MPH. You don't want to accidentally mix up your basal and bolus insulin. Label them. It's very important that you do that. Now, you might be wondering, can I use R insulin in my pump? Yes, you can use R insulin in your pump if you don't want to use uh, syringes for it. But note that you may need to change your basal and bolus rate, okay? Because R insulin works Again, it works differently, much slower, but also it's not quite as potent as the rapid acting insulins. So you might need to uh, raise your dose up a little bit. You might need to lower your dose up a little bit and um, just test all the time. I was able to actually use R in a pump for a long time. I'm not on a pump anymore, but when I was, I used R. It worked fine for me, but you need to keep that um, need to tinker in mind. And also keep in mind that you'll be using corrections with the pump as well, but corrections don't won't be as easy because they're a lot slower, right? The R insulin is a lot slower than your other insulins. You want to keep that in mind as well. And if you're using a, a, an advanced pump, maybe something like basal IQ or something like that, those pumps are not meant for using R insulin. So the calculations that they make are not going to be the ideal calculations you need. You have to be very manual with it, and you have to be on top of it. And those automatic calculations, the AIs they use for other insulins, won't necessarily work as well with our insulin. Again, not saying it can't work, but you need to tinker it, you need to be diligent, and you need to test constantly with it in order to make it work for you. That's all I have. Again, getting syringes, not too hard. Getting pens, harder. Using a pump, if you have one, you can do. Um, that's all I have. That really takes out the whole series. Um, just to review, we went over affording test strips. You can get them very affordable. You can get them unlimited. You can get insulin affordably in many different ways. You can use our insulin from Walmart. You can use MPH. You can use these cheap insulins effectively. And you can even get syringes cheaply. And by doing this, by knowing all this stuff, you'll be able to... No matter what happens, whether you lose your job, you lose your home, 
you know, you're on your husband's insurance and you get divorced or whatever happens, you're always covered. There's always a way for you to afford all of your dye bag supplies. Now, one thing I didn't go over, you might have noticed, is CGMs, because unfortunately CGMs are not affordable without insurance, but you don't need them. You can still get very good blood sugars without the fancy technology. You have to go without that fancy tech, but even without it, you'll still get the insulin, you still be able to test, you still be able to get all your needs covered cheaply and effectively. It is possible. There's many ways to do it. Just keep that all in mind. And if you know someone that needs to hear this message, and needs to understand that no matter what happens, they can afford the insulin. Here's how to do it. Please, please, please share this video. Share this video with any diabetics you know that can benefit from this. Because sharing this whole series with them, where I go over all these steps, can save lives. It can make sure that people always know their options and they never have to ration. They never have to go without insulin ever again. And if they do have to switch their insulins to a cheaper one, they know how to do it. Okay? So please share this video. And if you like it, like the video, like the page, and follow me on all my social media, my Facebook, my YouTube, my Twitter, and my Instagram for more content coming out all the time where I give more info on managing diabetes. That's all for now. Stay safe. And remember, you can't afford to manage type 1 diabetes.